We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I am doing pretty well over here. Pretty well. How are you doing, Jaren? It's been it's been a few weeks. It's weird. You take one week off, but then it's been a few weeks. Well, it's been a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm drinking out of a growler tonight, so uh, uh, apologies uh, for the uh, beer Much can crack. I mean, it's a new tradition. It's a good tradition, but we're just not doing it tonight because I'm I'm working my way through a growler, and you know you got to finish that off before it becomes, you know. But flat. a good tradition, but a good tradition though that we like to keep on doing is answering your questions. Hey, so, there yes, you go. This is a this is an Ask Sloopcast um, episode here. Uh, beer can fellow... crack sounds like a crazy band name. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so we, we got a, um, got some questions here from our our sloop cats down in the uh, in our Discord channel here, and yeah, we'll go we'll go through some of these uh, hooligan questions here. The hooligans, that sound good, Jared? The hooligans here. Hooligans. All right, um, Kyle. What Jared. camp battles are unofficially over? unofficially over yeah and i and like i'm going to be real with you i i'm not sure what uh this one's coming from from austin by the way um mr austin formation the i'm not I, i'm not totally sure what position battles ryan day has and well, has not officially well, declared well, here we go. Here we go. Let's 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 do this in, in a quick su succession here, Jared. OK, just yes or no question that the it is unofficially over the the battles are for each position. OK, sure. Real quick quarterback. Uh, not officially over. Nope. Running back. I don't know if it's officially over or not, but I, I think like. Trey and Quinchon are going to split carries. It's 1A, 1B. That's, they're both starters. Neither of them are starters. I'll, 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 accept, I'll, I'll accept that one. Wide receivers. We I, we don't even necessarily, <laughs> I, I think at this point we know Jeremiah, unofficially. I don't think there's an, a, I think we can officially say that Emeka Buka is starting. I don't know if we can officially say where. Because I know a lot of people have him at X and a lot of people have him at the slot. Mm -hmm. Is Ballard a starter? Is Tate a starter? I would how, how healthy how healthy is Innis? Yeah. Um Yeah. But, so no. The answer is no there. Uh tight end. I, I'll just say this. Emeka Abuka is gonna start and Jeremiah Smith is gonna start. Um mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not gonna swear that I know at what like X versus Z versus slot. But I'll tell you, those two are starting. Yep. Uh, I'd end. I think, I, I don't think it's officially declared, but I do think it's G Scott jr. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But depends on the formation. Like will we, will we see a, uh, two tight end formations here? I, I think, I think sure. we'll, I think we'll see some, I think we'll see some two tight ends more so this year than we have in the past few years. But yeah, I, I agree. I think, I think Scott's your, your main starter this year. Uh, offensive line. Okay. Donovan Jackson's definitely a starter. Um, yep. Josh Simmons is definitely a starter. Okay. I don't know if Josh Fryer has been declared a starter or not, but he, he's going to start at right tackle. Then you have Hinsman and McCullough. Yep. Has has McCullough been officially declared the starting center? I'm not sure if that's it's going to happen. Like it's going to play out that way. I don't know if Ryan Day has said Seth McCullough is a starting center or not. I it's been since April since we last talked about those things. I honestly don't remember if he's officially said it, but I think it's McLaughlin. I know. I always say it wrong. Uh, tradition here at the Sloopcast. You mispronouncing names. Um, McLaughlin. Um, I, so I'm going to tell you right now. 
your your left side is Simmons and Jackson. I believe that's official. Friars your right tackle. I don't know if that's official or not, but it's going to happen. Seth McCullough is your starting center. I don't know if that's official or not, but that's going to happen. And I feel very good in saying that Carson Hinsman's going to be the very is going to be the right guard. I I'm almost sure that's not official, but that's going to happen. And Will Howard is your starting quarterback. I don't think we went into that depth there. We we lost the plot on doing this quickly, um, but I guess I I don't I don't know who's been declared official starters or not. Also, I copied the Prepare. offense into this. Into fair, our, fair enough. Into our notes twice. Awesome. Good job, me. <laughs> um, defensive end. We know who the starting. I, the yeah. defense, we know it, who like 10 of the starters are without any thought. It, it's Sawyer and Tula Milau is your, is your two defensive ends. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, defensive tackles. I would say we know who the defense, the starting defensive tackles are. Yes. Okay. Uh, linebackers. It's Ty Leak and Hamilton for the record. Ooh. Yeah. Linebackers. That's a little more complicated. Um, yeah. So I'm going to say no, we don't. I, I would compare like the linebackers kind of like the wide receivers. You could probably name a couple and then they're on the field, but depending on the formation and is, the type of are, team they're playing. You, you, you may, you may see, you may see more, or you may see them in different position there. So I, I, I kind of compare the linebackers as wide receivers to an extent. Yeah. I mean, Sonny styles is going to play a lot of like most of the snaps, uh, CJ Hicks and Cody Simon are going to get a bunch of snaps. I think court Williams and Gabe powers won't get as many snaps as the first mm. three guys, but definitely are going to see some snaps. Um, Yep. Um, corners. Burke and Nick Nelson. That's, and again, there's some very good, there's some very good depth behind those guys, but those two yeah. are your starters. So and we can call that official. They're yeah, returning I, I think you starters. you can call the corners official. Yeah. I think you can call probably the defensive the most, line official too. Probably the most um, deep corners have been in a very, very long time. Yeah. Yeah, and Hancock, as as Gangland's pointing out, is your third corner, which yep. makes him the starting yep. nickel in this defense. Um, mm -hmm. And he'd probably and also you're... fill down into one of the primaries, maybe uh, cornerback slots if one of the other two guys gets hurt. Um, and and your starting safeties are yep. lock set. Yeah. So so I think we have marked down safeties, corners. Defensive, defensive ends, defensive tackles, um, and tight ends. I mean, you can maybe throw an offensive line, but we don't know what who's moving to what position yet, so I'm not going to count them. So we know five. I would say five positions. Ransom Downs yeah. and who else? Well, I mean, we, we we talked about Jordan Hancock as the as the nickel guy. So that's mm -hmm. your third safety. Uh it's just I don't I just don't I know they call him a safety in this defense, but it's it's probably telling that the that the third safety always comes out of the cornerback room. <laughs> Just pointing that out. Um, and then like your third safety just is or your fourth safety is Malik Hartford. But yeah, um, I, I so but the, to go back to the original question. What camp battles are unofficially over? I mean, I think we answered that. I mean, Austin didn't ask us to pick yeah. one. I think we covered it. Yes. Yes. All right. Which five Buckeyes would you bring to media day? Oof. Now, I'm going to answer this in two separate. I think I think we have to answer this in two separate ways. We have to answer this as podcasters. Who would we want to go to media day? And we need to answer this as Ryan Day. Who, if you were the coach, would you bring to media day? I, to me, I know he likes to 
I know traditionally like to kind of split them up. Content like brain versus half real offense, brain. Half, yeah. Half, half offense, half defense here. But the first two, like on the defensive side that comes to my mind, is probably Burke and Ransom. Um, Ransom's coming if you're a coach, for sure. Um, Burke is coming if you're a, if you're content brand, because he gives the most entertaining, like he's, mm -hmm. he's, he's number one with a bullet from a content brand standpoint. Um, this is a more senior defense. So since we're doing five, I think it makes sense to bring three from the defensive side. And sure. if I'm a coach, I Did think Hamilton, I, I, I think it's. I Hamilton think it's probably Simon. I think it'd, I think I'd go ransom Simon and Sawyer. One from each grouping. Those yeah, are your, your seniors. So Sawyer's your is your captain. Like he's a captain. He's being credited as being like the guy that brought all the seniors back for one last try at it. Um, like he feels if, if I had to pick like one leader on the team, Jack Sawyer might be my answer. So Sawyer's coming from both a content brain and a coach brain mm -hmm. standpoint for yeah. sure. Denzel Burke think, from a content brand brain standpoint, I'm bringing Burke. I don't know if he makes my final <laughs> list from a coaching standpoint, because he's might be the one that gets you in trouble because he was going for a laugh. <laughs> yeah. I think on the offensive side, I think you bring in Ibuka. Oh, it's a yeah. In in Fryer, I think are probably my off the top of my head are my two obvious on the offensive side. I don't agree. Okay. I do agree with Abuka, but I would probably pair him with Will Howard, Trey Henderson. I mean, he's your quarterback. You think Trey? I mean, how, yeah. Yeah, I, I think Trey's a good, I think if I can only pick two, if we're going three from the defense and two from the offense, I'm probably going Emeka and Howard. He's your quarterback. Yeah, I guess. They already have him out doing like press stuff already. They obviously trust him. He's. Yeah, I, I think he's a now from a content brain standpoint, I'm not bringing Will Howard because he's and, and I say this as kindly as possible. He's a politician, which is what you want if you're a coach. You want someone who's going to go out there, say the good, boring things. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's how I'm getting from like my, my peak amount of content from though. Mm -hmm. If I'm going for peak oh, amount right. of content, I think G Scott Jr. has to enter the conversation. Yes. Yes. All right, what big 10 team from last year is the biggest dark horse to make the big 10 title game this year? What team? So they had to have been in the big 10 last year. I mean, so we can't dark say horse, dark horse. Yeah. This is a, another this is another Austin, right? Mm -hmm. Another Austin. I, I, that's tough for me for like a, a dark horse here. I so mean, here, 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 I'm going to I'm going to take a screenshot here, Jared. I'm going to sure. put this in the chat. Sure. Put this in the chat here. Here, oh, here's Vegas the odds, odds in, 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 as of July 10th. Okay. So obviously, take out Oregon, take out USC, Washington in there. You, you, you can't include Ohio State because they're not a dark horse. Yep. yep. The question is, is like, is Penn State a dark horse? Penn State, yeah. That, 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 that was my first thought was... I pick Penn State, but then looking at the odds, I'm like, they're the third highest. They, they can't be a dark horse then. Yeah, and I don't, Iowa? I don't like, and by that, all, by that same standard, Michigan's just barely behind Penn State. I also don't like Michigan this year. Um, so pretty much losing. everybody below, everybody below Michigan in this, uh, in this uh, betting. Well, except, odds except we can't pick USC because per the language of the question. Correct. 
Correct. They weren't so in the Big Ten last Iowa, year. So Iowa, Nebraska, Wisconsin, and Maryland. Woof. I mean, Woof. I mean, they, they're a dark horse. That's the point of the question, right? <laughs> That's the point of the question. Um, Nebraska has reason for hope. Um, I don't think there's I enough mean, reason for hope. Okay, here's the thing. We don't have the Big Ten West anymore. You, you can't just backdoor your way into the Big Ten title game anymore, Big Ten West. Big Ten West is over. It's going to be really hard to dark horse your way into the Big Ten title game now. I don't, we'd almost have to do like a schedule analysis to answer this quickly, which or correctly, which I, we're not going to yeah. do within the scope of this episode. Yeah. We, we're going to do a Big Ten preview episode uh, next month at some point. So maybe we have a different answer to this question after we actually look over the schedules. But given the options available, I'm going to say Nebraska or Wisconsin. I don't like yeah. Iowa to do it. USC doesn't count. Washington doesn't I, count. Iowa has it. Iowa's going to be an offensive juggernaut this year, though, no, compared not. to years past. No, they're not. Compared to the years past. No, no they're not. <laughs> I mean, no. they, they, you, you can't be any lower than where they were. Uh, they still scored points. They Those could. On the defensive side. <laughs> they could not score points. Just saying. Just saying. Okay. Um, what, what, who will who will be the eleven starters on offense for the first snap against Akron? Eleven starters. So we have to we have to even just pick a formation. It's going to be against Akron. I think they're going to try to establish a run. So I think the very first play is going to be a two tight end. Um. Yep. So I'm going to say a Mecca Jeremiah Smith. The five offensive linemen who we've already mentioned, G. Scott, Will Kick Merrick, Will Howard, and I'm going to say Trey. Trey. Yep, I'll say Trey to start off. Yeah. That was 11, right? That was a quick answer. Uh, that was <laughs> Wow. That's a first for us. <laughs> And Kyle, how let's, many Kyle, let's celebrate many? the fact. Let's celebrate the fact that, that was a quick answer by taking uh, an even quicker ad break. Uh, if you want to avoid these ads, you can do that by going to uh, uh, this. Nope, not Discord. By going to Patreon, Patreon.thesloopcast.com. You can join our Patreon for as little as three dollars a month, um, and you can also buy T-shirts from our T-shirt stores. I, for example, am wearing the meme inspired um, It's All Ohio and It Always Has Been t shirt that you can pick up at 7071.thesloopcast.com. Um, and there's also our merch, the official Sloopcast merch store, which is merch.thesloopcast.com. Ohio is a psyop, though. Listen, I cannot confirm nor deny if Ohio is a psyop. I, 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 I cannot do that. But what I can do is tell you, you can avoid these ads by going to patreon.thesleepcast.com. And we're back from the break, Kyle. If you, if you even got the break, if you're listening on, on through your Patreon feed, you didn't get a break right there. Okay, but, how many, we're, we're going to go right back into um, one last question or not last, but another question here. How many Buckeyes, Jared, will be drafted in twenty in twenty twenty five? Jeez. Um, whatever the number say, it's over. Um, <laughs> so Buckeyes drafted in twenty twenty five. Kyle, keep keep counting for me, okay? Can you keep count for me? Everyone is a good um, answer. You will, yes. All right. Let's go Henderson and Judkins. I don't think Judkins is going to be here for more than one year. He could stay for longer than one year, but I don't Ooh. think he will. Okay. Um, Abuka. Mm -hmm. But that'll be it from the wide receiver room. Um, so Ballard, Ballard would be back. 
I said what I said. Okay. okay. Um, all right. All right. All right. G Scott has a possibility, yep. but I'm not going to swear to it. So put him, put him down as a half. Put him just put down 0. 0.5. Do 0. 0.5. All right. Howard. I don't think he translates to the pros. Now, could he get a sixth or seventh? Let's add him as the other half. As the other half. Uh, that's okay. What I was thinking. Um, I think Josh Simmons can get drafted if he comes out. I don't know that he will come out. Let's not put Josh Ransom. Simmons. Hold on, I'm, I'm going. I'm going through. Okay. The, I'm going. Okay. I'm going through the list. I'm going through the list. Let's okay. add fine, Seth. Fine, fine. Seth McLaughlin to the list. Let's let, and let's add Donovan Jackson to the list. Jackson could stay another year, but um, Mister Fryer. Anyway, um, I, I, do, do you think he's going to get drafted? I mean, all due respect. I don't don't make me be Kyle. Okay. I said what I said. Okay. That Okay. Okay. Fine. 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 Don't don't make me be a dick. Just, if if I skipped someone, I probably skipped him on purpose. Don't make don't don't make me be a dickhead. Um, Ty Leak will get drafted because he's definitely out of eligibility this year. Uh, Ty Hamilton, I think, will get drafted. Um. Defensive and uh, JT and Sawyer will be drafted. Um, go ahead and put down a half for the linebackers. Because I don't know if Sonny Styles will come out. I don't know if CJ Hicks would have to have a great year to come out after really only playing one year. Um, so put them down as a half. And for Cody Hicks, uh, for Styles and Hicks, and no, I think I think Simon will get. Styles. I think I think I think Simon will be a, um, a late rounder. Okay. Uh, Burke Hancock will both be drafted. Um, mm -hmm. Iggy will be drafted if he comes out, but I don't know if he comes out. So, so you want to add him or let's let's add him. Okay. He he played a lot as a freshman. He played a lot as a sophomore. I think he's in in decent okay. condition to come out. Um All right. Ransom. Else? Ransom. All right. And let's let's end it there. Go ahead and talk while I am counting. Kyle's, Kyle's counting. Um, let's see. I, I did say Ty Leak. I don't know if you said that before or after mm -hmm. I said it, Gangland. Uh, Cody Simon seems undrafted. Like he he's a late he's a late pick. He's a late pick. I think he's a guy who has shown he's great on special teams. Um, any special teams guys? N not this year. 17? It's a lot. It is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, even if it's 16, even if we maybe got too generous with one of them here or there, hell, even if it's 15, that's a lot. What's the record? Didn't Michigan just tie the record last year? What is that record? Is anyone in the chat now? Yes, but they were all 40 year old. 15. That doesn't change. 15. That doesn't change the fact. Um 15. Georgia the, holds the Georgia holds the most NFL draft selections by college in a single year since the NFL draft be, became seven rounds in 94, setting the mark at 15 in 2022. To the records, 15. We we can we can theoretically beat that. We can theoretically beat that. 
just depends upon 17 with some 0.5s. Yeah. How many 0.5s did we have, Kyle? Four. So, I mean, theoretically, it could be two more. Yeah, uh, Ohio State uh, from 2004 had 14 players and from 2016 had 12 players, which is tied for second and tied for fourth, respective, respectively. Insane. Absolutely insane. Is this list up to date? Didn't Michigan have a ton just this last season? Yeah. Yeah. This, this isn't fully up to date. So Michigan had 13. Okay. Which would put so they, them. They are standalone. They stand alone by themselves at, at um, fourth. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Next question. All right, next question here. Call your shot now. How many All-American seasons will Jeremiah Smith have in his collegiate career? Note, freshman All-American and all first through third teams and honorable mentions count. If you're going to give me all honorable mentions and freshmen, I'm going to say he's three for three. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you gave me a lot of... You gave us a lot of run uh, with, with uh, runway. You gave us a lot yeah. of runway there, um, including honorable mentions. Yeah, I'll, I and the freshman All American team. I'm, I'm gonna take that. I mean, wide receiver is tough to get the All American at though, because there's just so many good wide receivers. But again, if we get the freshman team and the honorable mentions included in that. I feel mm -hmm. comfortable saying three for three. Yeah. If Ryan Day were to announce a starter at any position during camp that is still undecided, it, which position that. do you think, which do you think is most likely? We did that. Oh, you did that? That was the, that was the only thing you at did. The top um, of the show. Okay. I miss look. All right. That's um, one. Yeah. Well, if Ryan Day were to announce a starter at any position, un, still undecided. Yeah, it's kind of the same question. Okay. As Ohio State. Oh, here's a good one, Jared. I'm sure this, I'm sure a lot of people will love hearing this one. Yeah, yeah. Has Ohio State turned into the Dallas Cowboys of college football? I mean, it's like, it's officially like lore that that's Notre Dame, right? So, so I guess depending on how you look at the question, are you looking at it from a fan base? Are you looking at it from a finishing the season? So it's, to speak, I, 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 in, I'm interpreting this question as it's both a, it, it denotes a casual fan of a certain age. Like when we were kids and they, th this continues into adulthood because, you know, people f form their fandoms when they're kids. There, there's a certain type of person whose favorite teams are the Yankees, the Cowboys and Notre Dame. Those are their favorite teams. They're just the teams that were and and the Lake uh, Lakers or Bulls. Again, you have to consider. I, I think it's also a generational thing. Because like. If you move this forward into. If you move this for someone who's maybe like 10 years younger than us, then you might be talking about having the same conversation about someone who's an Alabama fan and also a Patriots fan. I don't know anything about baseball. <laughs> but you, you get my point. Oh, the, the, yeah. Uh, yeah, they'd be a Warriors fan for sure. They'd be a Warriors fan for sure. Um, 
of the Notre Dame. So back to like my age range. They're also Man U fans. That's that's also that person. Who's who's the who's the soccer equivalent of that, Kyle? Would you say? Is is it just Man City now? Did they did we just move across the town? <laughs> Maybe it might be. Yeah, Barcelona is a good is a good one too. Yeah, Barcelona. Okay. Um. I yeah, just I I think it just it depends upon. I think it depends upon how old you are. Like I think that's a I think that person uh likes fav uh different teams depending upon how old they are for sure. Mm-hmm. All right. Um is no <laughs> this is such a kabuto question here. Uh <laughs> Okay. Is a rainbow wo- is a rainbow warrior someone who fights rainbows or someone who uses rainbows as a weapon? Um I don't know if he means this within the context of Hawaii or not. Um, but a rainbow warrior yes. is. Well, maybe the answer is yes, Jared. <laughs> okay, sure. But I. Okay. I, I guess. It's someone who's uh, self identifies with the rainbow and fights for the rainbow. It's like a Celtic warrior. Is, is simply someone who w- was a Celt who fought for the Celts, right? So a rainbow warrior is simply someone who fights underneath a, a flag of rainbow. Uh, it's, it's just, they're, they're Hawaiians. They have a tropical identity where lots of water and sun, where rainbows, I would assume, have never been, I would assume are frequent. Therefore, you know, their, their helmet obviously has a rainbow on it. That's, that's, that's the flag. That's the banner they fly. They fight under. Rainbow warrior was a Greenpeace ship involved in campaigns against whaling, sea hunting, nuclear testing, waste dumping the seventies to the eighties. Okay. Okay. Jared trying to be PC. Am I? I am not. That's it's just like it's that they're they're fighting under that banner. I was thinking very Games of Thrones when I said it. Um, I I mean, that's I'm sure that's not the origination. Is what's? Can can you just go to like the University of Hawaii or is it is it Hawaii? Uh, just look under their sports page and see if there's like an official etymology of the quote rainbow warriors for Hawaii. Cause I, I think that would give us at least an idea. I don't, again, I don't even know if Kabuto was specifically asking this question under the uh, context of of Hawaii football or not. It was timed with the approximate release of of uh CFB twenty five. So it might be. I think it is something to do with Hawaiian culture, yes. I mean obviously. Um I mean it would have to be, I, I would assume. I mean that's how most universities, unless they're a bulldog, get their name or a tiger. No tigers in North America. Why there are so many. Anyway. Kyle, you got anything on the, I was vamping for you. Did you find anything? Here we go. Mascot that molds two cultural tokens of pride together. The warrior is meant to represent the great warriors in Hawaii culture. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to try and pronounce that name. Um, uh, think Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. Because what if I'm wrong? It's Kamehameha. I, I mean, I know it's it Kamehameha looks... Kamehameha the Great. <laughs> I know it looks like that. 
But what if that's not how you say it? Anyway. Uh, rainbows are uh, prevalent in Hawaii and are symbols of... So it's it's seriously just that rainbows happen all the time in Hawaii. That's That was... You know, sometimes sometimes it's not that deep. <laughs> sometimes you guess and you get it right. It's just like, well, we got a lot of rainbows here. And why not? That's... Well, why are the Buckeyes the Buckeyes? Well, we, go, we, go, we have a bunch of those trees here. <laughs> it's, sometimes it's not that deep. All right. Um, before we answer the last questions, we're going to take one last one last ad, uh, ad break here. So, um, yeah, we'll take this break and be right back. And we're back. Kyle. We're we're in the we're in the stretch now. We're in the stretch. Uh, let's. Uh, what, what do we got? Next question. All right, we got one. We got one here from our um, good friend uh, Buckeye Zach here. Do you think the upperclassmen are owning the the fresh the frosh the at frosh. CFB twenty five right now? No. I I think I think the younger guys might have an advantage. I think the older guys have been they're maybe taking harder classes. Some of them got kids. They're maybe in serious relationships. This is their last year of college football? They might be like super locked in. Whereas the young guys that were in high school last year or two years ago playing Madden all the time. So they're maybe a lot more practiced up. Um, I'm going to assume that the young guys are more practiced up and will have the advantage. I answered that question way more seriously than I'm sure it was intended to be answered. <laughs> oh, you want you want more deep questions? From sun card. Yeah. Okay. It's a sun card question. I'm let me mentally prepare for a sun card question. Let me let me know. Oh, yeah, go, let go, me go, know when you're ready. Go go ahead. <laughs> what is the meaning of life, Jared? Oh, just just that straightforward. Um <laughs> just that straightforward. To leave a net positive effect on the world. We all do good things and we all do bad things. Try, try to net positive. That's leave, try and leave the world a better place for you having existed in it. That's the meaning. And he also wants to know, Jared, name something that is legal that should be illegal and something that is illegal that should be legal. Okay. Um, something that's legal, but should be illegal. Mm-hmm. Um, I, Kyle, I'm not going to be able to answer that question without being political. I think, cause that was like the first five things that popped into my head. Um, the, the, but uh, okay, this is political, but this is neutrally political. Um, Oh, you know what? Uh, Zach's giving me a good bailout down here. Michigan. Michigan should be illegal. Michigan is currently legal. Michigan should be illegal. You, you want, you want he gave me, me a bailout. This with a, you, you want me to answer this without going into any, any anything political? Sure. Child beauty pageants. There are Southerners who would take offense to that, but they're Southerners. Fuck them. But no, I'm I'm down. I'm with you. I I will. I'll co-sign that. Kyle, if we're if we're going to go down, if someone's going to be offended by that, if someone's going to say that's too political, listen, we'll at least go down together because that shit's creepy. (laughs) The Sloopcast Child Beauty Pageant for Adults. Gangland, that is like sunny-esque as in it's always sunny that 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 is it's something straight from it's sunny i i I don't know 
they're borderline pedophile. I, I, I don't know how border, I mean, it's, 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 no, it's not a there I said it. I think, I don't think you're going to catch a whole lot of, we're literally trying to make children attractive in it. Like I, it's like, I don't think that's a there I said it thing. I think that's, I think that's implied in all of us not liking it. I think that's, I, I think that's the implication that we maybe don't want to say, but that's the implication. People, All right, Kyle. people talk, people talking, um, on their cell phone on speaker. <laughs> that, that's in sh- public. Yeah. I, I, yeah. In public. I, I knew you, I knew you meant in public. <laughs> yes. It's the implication. Exactly. Sun guard. It's the implication. Um, microwaving fish in, in an office. I mean, period, but in an office setting. Yeah. That that should also be illegal. All right, but what's what's the what's the inverse of that? What's currently yeah illegal? illegal. That should be illegal. Um, how's how how the how's the uh, weed laws doing in North Carolina, Kyle? What's do you have any you have any reform there on that yet? Because listen. Ohio is just now finally getting the medicinal buildings turned over to casual use, like finally after a year. But um, how's North Carolina doing on that? I think that's something that just should be illegal or should be legal. As of at this time, marijuana is illegal in the state of North Carolina. So there's your selling and all of that. Yeah, I, I think I think that should be your answer. I live in a cool state. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Something that's illegal that should be legal is even more difficult not to be political about. I mean, some people are going to find the weed answer political, I'm sure. Um, Anyway, that that one's even tougher to answer without getting into political. I, I I like this one. Putting money into other people's parking meters. That is illegal. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll, i I'm, yeah, I, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that as an answer. All right, Kyle, any other questions? Or are we in, or are we getting close to wrap it up territory? I think so, unless there's anybody down in the chat there that has any other, any other questions that's, uh, that's come up here. Yeah, you got either uh, we have uh, both Gangland and Zach Which, active in the chat right now. But uh, I know, Jared, we, we, we talked about a lot about a lot about this on uh, off offline here, Jared, about um, my reading or. I thought you were going to um, thought, thought you were going to talk about a recent change in the yeah, or, no, presidential no, ticket about, <laughs> about pirating. Uh, video games sure i thought you were going to mention something like that about what should be illegal what's illegal that should be legal i don't I, i'm or not that. i don't know if i'm for like full-fledged piracy that of you own, video that you games own, that you already own well that's not okay yeah I, I think there should be a way to and this is why steam is so good like if I own a game, I should just be able to own the game. I shouldn't have to buy it once for a computer and then have to buy it again for a console. Or like that that should be and I think that goes for a lot of things. I think once I buy a license to own a movie or an album, I should just be able to own that movie or that album for personal use. Regardless of the platform. I, I don't think I should have to buy it once for a, I don't think I should have to buy it on CD and then turn around and and buy it again. You know, through the Apple Play Store or whatever, I combined the two stores. But you know what I'm saying? 
I don't know what, what Agora means. Um, Zach, um, I, I know what agoraphobic means, but I don't think that's what you're talking about. Um, the market. I, I'm expressing consumer rights. That's, that's how I would characterize that. <laughs> All right, Kyle, was, uh, wait a minute. We have, yeah, are we putting up a hundred or 200 against Michigan? Uh, 150. 150. 150. Well, it'd be like 148 probably. It's probably not gonna be 150. It'd be like 148. Not, not to ask Slipkas question, Jared, but we are at the end of the episode here and wanted your thought here because it came up. You can ask me who's going to be the VP candidate. No. Okay. Um, It's come up from uh, Pete Thamel over the week here. Your thoughts on changing the scholarship limit to one from 85 to 105. I I think if you're going to pl- I think if you're going to play a longer season with the playoffs, I think it makes sense to have a larger roster. However, if you if you increase it too much at a certain point Now, but here's the thing though, you basically have with the transfer portal, you can't you can't like hoard players anymore because that's one of the reasons why they lowered the scholarship limit is because schools would be bringing in players just to keep them away from other schools. But mm-hmm. if you have open transfer now, players can, there's no more one-time transfer. It's open transfer. It's, you don't have to sit out a season anymore. Players can just go from one team to another team if they want to. So if the original reason for bringing down scholarships was to prevent teams from hoarding players, does the new portal rules negate the purpose of the 85 limit? These are good questions that I haven't really thought about until right now. It does make sense to me. Now, do we have to go from 85 to 105? Could we try 100? 95 like t- to go up by 20 feels like a lot but I, I think also especially with the season being longer change the red shirt limit too i think the red shirt up, limit's up already at, i you don't have to change the red game you don't have to change the red shirt limit you just have to make the playoff games not count for red shirting so if you're going to do That's that, fair. do that. Yeah. Just because isn't that post already season. the case with bowl just, games? Just, just postseason. Um, Is it, or don't postseason games already not count? A uh, gangland says yes. Factor in rev- revenue share now. Sure. How much does increasing by that much increase NIL requirements? Well, that's the other thing. It might be self-policing. It also might not be self-policing. The the big teams will figure it out one way or the other. These are good questions. I'm not going to find it in time, but but we, we can move on. Yeah, no, but these are good questions, and I think we should be exploring these questions because, like I said, the 85 limit was put in place to prevent player hoarding, to make sure players didn't get buried on depth charts with no real opportunity to ever play. That was the purpose. But if players can transfer, does that negate the purpose of that rule? What are the potential negative ramifications of this rule? I quite frankly don't see any. Having thought about it for a minute, I I might look into this more deeply 
and change my mind. But as of right now, sure. Increase the scholarship limit. And again, I don't think we should go from 85 to 105 overnight. Maybe we increase it by five for the next four years. These are good questions. These are good questions that we should be exploring. I don't have a rock solid opinion on it yet. That's my take. Yeah, as of NCAA, it allows red shirts to play in bowl games for 2022. So, so yes. Yes. Yeah, so postseason already don't count for red shirts. So we're already taken care of there. Marco, anything else? Um, as far as the questions, no. But I think outside of questions, there was a big thing, big thing that came up here. As um, I'm just, I'm just making sure I'm saying the, sure I'm saying correctly here. But um, yeah, Trey McNutt postponing his uh his commitment date. That's big. That's, that, that's that's big for Ohio State fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's if, if he was going to commit on the original day, he was going to go to Oregon. Um, ex exactly, Gangland, and and I'm very happy that the uh, OBS filters taking the blue out of that button. Um, the but yeah, no, I, I yeah, if, if he was going to commit on the original commitment date, he was going to Oregon. Um, him postponing that date. Did he set the, uh, another date or did he just say not right now? I assume he just said not right now. Right. Um, that that's a good thing for Ohio State. Um, I was going to say anyway, in regards to Trey McNutt and, and, and I and I feel the same way about Dorian Brew who did commit to Oregon. I, I don't think Ohio state's done in either of those cases anyway. It's not to say that I definitely think Ohio state's going to get both of them. I'm not saying that for the record. Um, but I feel much better about McNutt now that he is pushing back mm -hmm. his commitment date and I'm just not giving up on brew yet. Yeah. Um, Carter, or I'm sorry, um, Jarquez Carter commits to Ohio State. Yep. Yep, yep. Uh, he's been in and out of my mock, but always in the watch list. I don't know if I had him. We did a mock class two weeks ago. I don't remember if I had him in the mock class or not, um, but he was definitely on the watch list because I he's a guy who I've moved in and out of the out of the mock a few times, but he's definitely been, he's never left the watch list. I'll tell you that much. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, um, mock class and, is almost full at this point. I'm actually scrolling through it. If you, you know the YouTube people <laughs> can actually see the latest version of it right now. And of course you can see the latest version of my mock. Cause I am always updating it uh discord.thesloopcast.com it's available for public viewing at all hours the apps uh, see look at this i don't even have trey mcnutt out of the mock yet he's still in the mock <laughs> i don't have dorian brew in the mock um i feel really good about, about david him? sanders i feel pretty good about um javon mcfadden feel pretty good about Philip Bell. And those are the four guys. Those are the only four guys that I have in the class who aren't committed at this point. Um, what about uh, Landon Miller? What about Landon Miller, Jared? A, a prospect for the 2031 class. 2031. Get out of here. Braxton's Braxton's son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he he got he got his very first scholarship. Stupid. <laughs> From uh Tom Herman in the Florida Atl at Florida Atlantic. 
stupid. Jakeem Stewart. Jakeem Stewart, as of right now, is still in the 2026 class. I am not going to put him in the mock 2025 class unless he reclassifies. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just, I'm not going to, I know everyone says he's going to, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. And that's great. But until he actually does it, I'm not putting him in the 2025 mock. I'm just, I'm just not. I do have him in the 2026 mock class though. I'll tell you that much. But that's it. That is all. That's all that I have on my in my notes here. Things to talk about. Awesome. Um, does that count as Kyle's corner? Do you want a separate Kyle's yeah. corner? Yep. That's that counts as that counts as Kyle's corner. Yep. Oh, that counts. The Olympics start. Olympics start this week. That's Olympics now. That's a Kyle's week. corner. That's, that's a, a Kyle's classic. Corner. That is yes. a classic Kyle's corner. <laughs> Kyle getting. Uh, I mean, he didn't say track and field, but we we all know what Kyle's excited about when it comes to the when it comes to the Olympics. He's oh yeah, Mister Track and Field over here. Oh yeah. All right, where's that's Sun it. Card at? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Austin talks some track and field with you too. Um, all right, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna start a um. I know that we have a professional sports, but I'm gonna I'm gonna. Well, it's not open a new. There isn't, but there's already an amateur sports channel. And in fact, I I think it has, and I think, and I think it already has like an Olympic medal as one of the emojis to denote that. But we don't need to talk about how we organize the Discord server while the while the while the tape's running. (laughs) So that's it. That's the end of today's episode. Tonight's ending music we brought to you by a band. I believe they're out of the Dayton area, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they are called Abertooth Lincoln. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to, and it's Abertooth. It's, it's, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, let me, let me elaborate on that. Just in case someone, you know what? The, the links are down in the show notes. The links are always down in the show notes. Abertooth Lincoln. If you don't know how the hell to spell that, it's it's down in the show notes. So with all that being said, I'd like to uh, encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Abertooth Lincoln.